if you can hear me from here, uh, maybe it's better to see it. So, yes. Maybe it's better to see it. Th thank you, first of all. Um, uh, my apologies for not speaking Spanish. Um, I could speak Italian, but I don't know. It's better to, to start in English and see. Thank you. Uh, I'm really honored uh, to be here, and I thank uh, the organization, GM in particular, for this opportunity to be here with you in such a fantastic place. Um, it is really an opportunity. And as I heard from the previous presentations, uh, thinking of opportunities as life is really important. So thank you again. So today I'm going to talk uh, about the project as Guillaume um, uh, told you. Um, we're going to talk uh, about the, um, uh, the way how this project uh, um, was uh, thought uh, and from where it um, originated. As Guillaume told you, I represent, uh, I'm full professor in experimental pedagogy, museum education at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, Unimore. Uh, and there I chair a center for research called Intellect. Um, and it's a center that aims at promoting different, um, different subjects, um, different kind of research in different disciplines and studies, especially in uh, digital and heritage education. Um, our idea is that museums, um, uh, heritage education can support cross-sectional skills development and this is uh, uh, really important if we think of the role that uh, um, um, heritage can play in developing uh, citizenship skills and well-being and cultural uh, participation. We have been involved in, in different projects at national and international level. The center is an international one, and here you can see um, um, those who are part of our board, our scientific board. We have, uh, of course, colleagues from the European area. Uh, some are uh, here with me, with us today uh, from Europe, but we have different friends participating in the board also from US in particular, from the uh, Metropolitan Museum uh, of Art in New York City of the, or the National Gallery uh, uh, in Washington and uh, others um, from other uh, organizations um, all over the world, I'm, I, I would say. Um, so, uh, where did we uh, start? We know that um, cultural places um, can be uh, agents of social change and actually the examples, the, the projects that you presented today are a clear uh, evidence that this is possible. Mm, museum support uh, actions that have this kind of social uh, impact. Um, the possibility to have intercultural dialogue and involvement of different categories in the museum is, uh, of course, another uh, um, possible issue of contributing to the dev developing of a new shared uh, memory that is actually the aim of the project we are carrying out all together in our partnership. And there's uh, um, the possibility of support, the development of a sense of identity uh, that is strictly uh, connected to active citizenship. Uh, I told you about the um, idea of supporting uh, cross-sectional skills in this idea of promoting uh, democracy and participation policies. These aspects are closely connected also to digital skills. Uh, digital skills and cultural heritage, um, even if 
you know, apparently uh, seems two worlds apart, they, they can be really uh, connected. Why? First of all, because there's a way, and actually in our project we are trying to do that, to support the um, development of uh, um, digital skills through uh, the appreciation and experience of uh, heart and heritage anyway. Uh, and there's um, another uh, important implication that is that of supporting digital skills development in order to be active citizens. Over the pandemic, all of us experienced the uh, difficulty of taking ac active part in society um, uh, if uh, we weren't able to use computers or to use uh, devices that could put us in connection with other people um, being uh, locked down. So um, there's literature related to this possible uh, connection, the possi this possible um, um, uh, implication. So uh, we need, uh, our reflection was that of um, the need of developing uh, educational systems based on uh, these kind of uh, um, reflections. So um, our um, first uh, aim was that of reflecting on how to uh, support uh, the four C skills, so creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking, which are strongly supported by cultural heritage. Um, the possibility to um, um, actually demonstrate uh, that um, enhancing transverse competencies uh, within democratic cultural context improves people's well-being. Uh, what do we mean uh, by well-being? We mean being active, being responsible, being connected, being resi resilient, being appreciated, respected, and aware. So it's a, a very wide uh, way of interpreting the concept. Um, well-being um, is for us actually the possibility to participate in you know, our communities uh, of reference. So investing in a people-centered approach to heritage um, that benefits all levels of society brings social cohesion and economic growth. This other aspect that social uh, development can bring also economic development is another uh, point uh, that we really care uh, about as a center for research and in some way also uh, as a project. The other um, considerations that, that um, supported our action are related to the 2030 uh, agenda of sustainable development goals. So, you know, and you have uh, heard about this several times, I guess, but there are two goals in particular, um, goal four, education, uh, and goal three that are particularly relevant uh, to us, especially goal three where uh, we talk about good health and well-being and where um, the target of promoting mental health well-being is something that is really taken into great consideration. Um, and the idea of focusing on the uh, importance of mental health well-being and on the role that culture plays in attaining this kind of sustainable goals is uh, absolutely important to us and is uh, at the center of our uh, attention. Also, the EU uh, Work Plan for Culture 1922 underlines uh, the same uh, aspects. Um, and uh, there's a um, specific uh, attention on what uh, um, participatory turn um, towards uh, full cultural citizenship. 
uh, it goes without saying that people with disabilities, LGBT plus communities, low income people, ethnic minorities fi face numerous barriers to participation in cultural heritage um, and inequalities have an impact on individual and social well-being. So it's our duty, first of all as educators, but besides that, um, to um, support and to create different heterogeneous teams working on these uh, uh, subjects. Again, here you have uh, a, a definition of what um, is meant um, by us with, um, regarding mental well-being. That is, uh, as you can see, um, for us, and this is the definition that we want to work on, a dynamic state in which the individual is able to develop their potential work productively and uh, creatively, uh, build strong and positive relationships with others and contribute to their uh, community. So as you can see, there are many different aspects in this definition that needs uh, great attention. I always um, mention this um, reference that is the ladder of citizen participation. That is an old reference, as you can see, is from 1969. But the connection, the visible connection uh, between the way um, you um, uh, involve, you manage in involving uh, people in society matters and uh, the degree uh, of control of actual uh, participation is so um, effective that I think should always be uh, um, kept in our, in our mind. So it's again something that was at the basis of what we um, decided to do through our uh, European project. So there are different kinds of, uh, of issues uh, there. First of all, um, weaknesses uh, of the existing health and social care legislation related to the aspects that I mentioned before. The fact that ads programs for health and well-being are often temporary. Uh, there are many spots initiatives, but not a systematic um, uh, way of approaching this kind of programs. I, I mean, at European level, from what I heard this morning here, you have, I see, so I have to run, really. Um, the other issue is that the dissemination of museum experiences for well-being and health promotion is not uniform. There's a need for a cultural change and there's a need for effective partnerships uh, between um, institutions. What is our project about? Our project is related to um, support this kind of uh, uh, pillars, uh, working together, art, health, and well-being, uh, supporting these partnerships, cooperation between higher education institutions, health, uh, social care institutions, and museums, heritage uh, sites. Um, how did this project uh, um, uh, originate? What was the, 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 the um, actually the path that the project uh, carried, uh, w brought? Uh, actually, it started from a, a bilateral ag agreement uh, in 2017-18 between the University of Roma Trail, where I was working at the time, and the University College of London. Um, I need to say that um, the original idea uh, stemmed from this cooperation between Italy, Roma Tre University and the University College of London in the person of Ellen Chatterjee. I think many of you have heard about her. She is actually the one who created uh, the arts and health issue in Great Britain and then this idea spread uh, all over the world, I would say. From that, we created another project that stemmed from the first one, uh, that was a, a university project involving seven different departments, subjects from economics to engineering, architecture, of course, 
uh, of course, arts, literature, and education, and then our European project. The European project that uh, we are introducing today and where the Institut Català de la Salut uh, is involved in is made of a partnership uh, led by the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia where I, where I teach, where I work, Zetema Progetto Cultura uh, and there I see uh, our colleague from the organization. Zetema is a big important company uh, working with museum services in Roma, so it serves all the museums, uh, actually a very uh, big network of museums in Rome, more than 100 museums, am I, am I right? Yes. The Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia Madrid uh, and Covadonga uh, is there and she is the responsible for, for the unit in Madrid. Uh, Universidad de Aberta, Antonio Moreira Texeira is there and is the responsible for, for the unit in, in Portugal. Ascoli Highlands uh, and Ayadora Arnotit. Arno Dottir is there for, for Ascoli Highlands. Uh, Interalia and Rebecca, I can't see her, but I know she's here. Um, Interalia is an organization, a uh, no profit organization from Greece, from Athens, and they work with m migrants integration. And the Institut Catala de la Salut, uh, coordinated <laughs> in this case uh, by who is there. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, also the partnership was meant to um, address different kind of objectives, uh, especially to address um, objectives that was uh, addressed to different kind of targets uh, in order to try to cover uh, many different uh, um, areas of issues. I know ti the time is, is running and from from what I say, I should end my presentation. But anyway, I will be um, very, very brief. Here you have the main objectives of the project that are actually related to this idea of using uh, museums and museum objects as tools for inclusion uh, um, from different point of views, as you might have understood. In this slide, you have a um, presentation of our uh, project results. So there are project results. The first project results were addressed, of course, to have a recognition of the situation all over Europe uh, related to the use of museums as inclusive spaces. Um, findings from this first, uh, um, from this first uh, uh, results uh, were, uh, are to be used to develop uh, and to design uh, new pilot courses addressed to different kinds of users, museum, um, museum educators, um, educators, um, medical staff, of course, in particular caregivers uh, and all those uh, involved in um, taking care of people with different kind of uh, difficulties. Uh, pilot and blended course delivery and the e-content production for digital inclusion. Um, the uh, development of a MOOC course uh, on developing key competencies to um, exploit the potential of museums as inclusive spaces and the creation of inclusive paths uh, into museum for people with health problems. The other uh, cross-section result is that of developing new uh, assessment tools uh, and the issue of assessment is something that we really care about because um, assessment needs to give us measures of the impact uh, we want to carry out and so this is really pivotal to us. We develop different methodologies to carry out the project, the ADI methodology, analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation, the ABCD approach, so working on the assets that we already have in the community, supporting these assets and employing and using them, uh, making the community improve by itself. Um, I will go rapidly on the results, the presentation anyway is there, so you can access these links and read um, the results from the first 
project results we we already um, uh, carried out we developed also a handbook on the use of technology for inclusive educational activities in museum contexts this uh, we cons we consider this result very very relevant and important um, because of that connection, being active citizens, uh, being able to develop uh, digital skills, use digital skills to be more active citizens. So, um, a, a, um, a reciprocal way of approaching the use of technology. Uh, how can technology support the promotion of well-being in museums? This was our uh, re main research question. And again, you have a report uh, regarding the results we obtained. Just a quick uh, overview. Um, we uh, managed in identifying different clusters of technologies used uh, at the museum. Museum, um, with different kind of uh, aims. Um, we selected some uh, um, augmented reality uh, in particular, virtual reality and um, certain uh, technologies that support uh, the study of visitors' emotions and we uh, reached uh, certain conclusions. So two minutes and the presentation will be over. Um, ICTs are increasingly adopted in museum contexts, as you might know, to improve the general experience of visitors. Uh, boost their emotional engagement is something that we really care about, transfer new knowledge and develop transfer skills that are essential to active citizenship. Uh, even though uh, these objectives are aligned with the freefall definition of well-being adopted for our project, the Inclusive Memory Project, there is an evident gap in the literature uh, concerning the employment of ICTs in museums for assessment purposes. This is the, the, the key. Um, uh, there are uh, many different areas, many different museums that are experiencing this use of technology, but there's a lack of measuring um, the impact of such um, technological use. Um, there's a lack of uh, identification of uh, key performance indicators that are um, necessary to understand where we are going and what are we doing if, if, if we are effective or, or not. So um, uh, there are potentials there, and um, there are many different technologies used, but we need to study, to make research, to identify uh, those technologies that are uh, more uh, useful than, other, uh, than others. Uh, I always say um, we need to have a critical use of technology to be um, effective, to be successful in every uh, area of uh, society uh, where we use technology, so uh, in, in our uh, everyday life as well. So I uh, thank you so much and I, I hand here my presentation and for whatever question or other um, curiosity or query please uh, contact us and um, uh, go to our website, our project inclusive memory project web website to get more information. Thank you so much. Thank you.